Actually, many of them were even shot in the head. They will shoot. This is the horror story of the Idi Amin torture chambers. You've done. Uh, some, some, some of the good things which I can talk about, he is the pioneer of the Uganda Airlines. Mm. He was the man who built that entered the airport. Mm. Yeah. Most of the roads which you have in the country, we are built by Idi Amin, they are still there. Mm. This man, when he perused through his regime, he gave people opportunities, mm -hmm. especially women. Mm -hmm. He encouraged them to stand and work mm -hmm. by themselves. So that's why you see a lot of ladies in the markets mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he gave people platforms. Though on the other Yeah, so this place actually was hidden. Nobody could notice what was taking place here. When he became the president, Idi Amin uh, hired Israelis. Israelis are known to be good architects. They are very, very good builders. So he brought them in to build for him a place where he could store a number of his weapons. It was an armory in a way that when the vehicle brings weapons, it could turn its back in reverse form from this side up which could easily come here inside. Mm -hmm. Down here, this, this, it has five cells, and all these cells were able to be hide the trap. The trap would easily park here, and it could offload in the sides. It would open up easily. So, uh, these cells also had a sliding gate, which you can still see up. Use this for storage purposes for only eight months. We underground. That's why you see what I'm trying to do this the ceiling and it comes down, then to the level of ladder. This floor where we are standing in, we start to get the chamber. This floor was filled with water. You can still see this sofa in the here. The line is still visible, and this water was in the center of the water. Yeah. They would arrest you wherever you are, turn your arms at the back, blindfold you. So they could bring you here, you are blindfolded, they make you stand in this water, they switch on powers, they switch it off, they torture you and extract out what they want from you. After you speaking, some men they immediately die because of electric shock. After you speaking, they force you to find one of the cells. These cells are also enclosed. When you manage to jump from one of the cells, you couldn't escape the liquefied water. When they bring fresh ones and find any weak one inside, they bring out the weak one, put them in the water, they suffer as the fresh ones. Mm -hmm. These men, for them to stand in the water, they must disconnect the power. That's what they need most. Yeah. <coughs> so they could put over 100 men in one cell. These men could die with uh, suffocation, serious torture, and hunger. The Israelis built this place capacity for storage, so they never get it with ventilation. This water down somehow turned to be quite muddy and dirty, whereby men would step in with their dirty shoes, full of mud and so forth. Someone maybe was dying of electric shock. You can see his fingernails left them here. Mm. He must have been in pain. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. So uh, they didn't allow anyone to leave this place when you were alive. Oh. Actually, we have some spray bullets here. We look here. This was a bullet. We have even others up at the extreme end. Those three holes. Yeah. yeah. They could shoot the you in the head and do not allow you to take out the information of what is exactly here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when the bodies are truly they could pack them in the lobbies. Many bodies were dropped on the roads to scare people from rioting. Other bodies were buried in the massacres. Up to death, some massacres have not been identified. Other bodies were thrown in Lake Victoria and ended up by the Nile crocodiles, others are river Nile.